The youth, the youth are going. Okay, the youth are going out there. Thank you, bro. If anybody else wants to disappear, you know you can go. You know, it's a good opportunity. They, you know, I can't blame you. This could be a very short night. What was that? Okay. Am I on with this thing? Okay. Okay. All right. It's going to be pretty short. Let me get my couple of notes here I got. Let's have altar call right now. Let's pray over the boy. Anyway, let me get my my notes here. It's only have one or two, three pages. And I can get them in line. Yeah, never mind. Here's my notes. Here's my notes right here. What was this? What was that say, kid? No notes. No notes. No notes. And the reason I don't have notes is because God didn't give me any notes. He wanted me to say it from my heart. But since it is Wednesday, you don't have to turn, but um, I do want to read some scripture. In this day and time, we need we need to laugh. <laughs> we need to smile. We need to cut the TV off. I talked to a friend of mine this morning. Very old friend. I've known him 35 years. I said, man, what you doing? Oh, not much. Sitting in the house. I said, you been anywhere? Nah. I said, you want to go fishing? Nah. I said, you want to just go out and ride around? Nah. Well, at least I go, I go down to Walgreens to get my. You're not the only person. I know of another family that ain't been out of the house since March. Other than going to the store, what kind of life is that? You know, if I get COVID, I have underlying things, but just so if I get bad enough, just put me in a coma and, and let God decide what he wants to do with me. But I'm not going to quit living because of this. God, <laughs> God's still in control. Of the, you know, this, he knew years ago this COVID thing was going to hit. He knows it. He knows. He knows about the election. He knows. God, God, God is so good. In one, Psalm 145, David writes, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Unsearchable. I've never even heard of it before. I didn't know anything was unsearchable. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's just how great he is. It's unsearchable. There's no word. Like I told you. I thought English was the worst waste of time when I was in high school because I already knew English. I already knew how to talk English. And I, didn't, I don't have the words, but this right here, unsearchable. David didn't have the words either. 
I don't think anybody in here has got the words to tell me how great God is. But one generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. I was thinking yesterday I was outside about 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock in the morning and the sun came out. Did anybody get any rain this morning? Uh, the sun popped out for the first time and I, and I had a sign. Has anybody got a, a COVID test? Has anybody had one in here? Has anybody had two? Number one, um, it gives y'all something to shoot for. But uh, <laughs> but I'm thinking about 10 o'clock, the sun pops out. And man, that thing feels good to my body. Feels good to my soul. And I said, thank you, Lord. And still. Got really sad. When you go to talk and you feel like it's not happening, well, it ain't it's happening with God. It might not. It's, it's got to do with sin. You got sin in your life. Don't ask God for nothing till you ask God to forgive you of your sin. <laughs> because all that you can stay from now to tomorrow this time praying ain't going to happen. It's a waste of time. So I had to stop right then asking God for forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord. Thinking, Christ asked Paul or Peter three times, Do you love me? That's all I can think of. Do I love him? Do I think of him? Do I think of God as somebody's got something else decided to look at me? No, God's sitting right here, and he's looking at me, and he's saying, you know, you can have all this and more. If you just get down on your knees, repent of your sin, and ask for forgiveness. And you can have, I'll, I'll grant you, I'll give you an answer. I'll make you, I'll give you peace. Does anybody got, have peace in here? Do you not have peace? You know why? Sin. Sin. You got sin in your life. I got sin in my life. When, I, when I'm not having peace, I got to search. I got to search myself. And I feel so bad because... Christ got the whipping of a lifetime. He got beat beyond recognition. He got flesh tore out of his. Not something that happened in a movie or something that make believe. It's real. It was very real. So what do I do? I mean, he, you know, I get a little extra pain. I think, oh my goodness, 
people know I'll make it. But after he took all that beating, all that, he carried that cross. He carried that cross. Then he got on that cross. And he got nailed to that cross. Oh, my goodness, nailed. Can you imagine the pain? Being nailed to a cross. Not only that, though, he had my sin on him. Dirty, rotten stuff I've done in my lifetime. Stuff I hate. He had that on him. He had all y'all sin on him, too. Sometimes we sit here and we take God for granted. We'll go out of here and we'll, whatever comes on the radio or, or whatever. Our lives are so busy. It's hard to make God number one in your life nowadays. Would you work? And there's always something that you question. Well, is this more... Am I putting this in front of God? You know, you got to check yourself. You got to check yourself. Don't let, don't go to bed. Sin in your heart. Love God. I have not always loved God. I have cursed God. And so good to me, so long suffered. I can think, think of four things in my lifetime where I should be dead. And for some reason or another, I was spared. I'm the only one in my family now that's still alive. Why? I think God wanted me here on, on October Wednesday night. Telling everybody how much I love my God and my Lord and my Savior and my King. I hope y'all do. I hope y'all do. It's such a wicked world out there. Today. There's some wicked people that's going to be running our country. And they already have. They already are. I'm about like the pastor. I'm not one of a Donald Trump fan. Well, I am Christian way. I don't know if he's saved or not, but as far as any Joe Biden or somebody, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out there. I'd invite him in, come in and get saved. Uh, I love my God and I love my Savior for what he did. But let me ask you this. Let me... I want to read something else, and then I'm going to go. Oh, yeah, Joy. Joy said he had plenty of time. He had to have a lot of time. Colossians 2 and 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Stay in the Bible. I'm going to tell you something, kids. Dalton, in your age group, don't waste your time, your life, running after every little thing, every little thing that gets your attention. Or friends try to get you to do this. God will take you to places you will never think you will ever go. And he'll introduce you to people you would never think you would ever be introduced to. Not only you, but any of you. you. All you got to do is stay grounded in God. Stay grounded in your Bible. You got to read your Bible. You got to read your Bible. You can't do it without it. 
but God is so great. He can take nothing. He took this piece of clay, this dirty, rotten, stinking piece of clay, and he's got me up here on a Wednesday night telling you how much I love my God and how much I appreciate my Savior. I will not waste a moment where I do not bow down and tell anybody that Jesus Christ came to this earth. He taught. He died. He went to hell. He came back with the keys of hell and death. And he came back and he even he even ate with the disciples again. And then he ascended. I believe that. I believe every word of this. And you know what? A lot of people don't believe this. I believe this. I'm so stupid. I believe every bit of this. Kids, don't, don't, don't waste your time on, on stuff. Don't, 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 don't worship these so-called sports figures and stuff. Well, that, you know, it's downright sickening what these people do. Don't worship them. Don't worship the, your mass singers and all that garbage. Worship a Christ because you're going to be standing in front of him one day. Every one of us is going to be standing there one day. And some of us going to be quicker than others unless he comes back. Thank you. I love you. I love my church. I love my pastor. And that's something else I want to enjoy. I'm sorry. He will never tell you how much he's concerned about this church. He has been through more in this last year from so-called friends and church members ridiculing him and I don't understand it I don't know how you can do that to a man like my pastor and I take exception to it uh, I love my pastor I don't always have his ear I don't have to have his ear But I do have to have him standing up here preaching the word of God. So, thank y'all. I love you. Brother Joy, it's all yours, man. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. Well, the Lord knows me, and he said, son, you better write some notes or you're going to be like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I want to thank you again, Ronnie. I want to thank Preacher <clears throat> Witt for allowing me to speak up here. And I also want to thank him for Monday nights, uh, spending his time Monday nights growing us and teaching us and and just making us better men for the church, and, and not just for the church, but our families and God, too. Uh, I do have a note here in my notes to tell the church that there's no danger in breaking any of Preacher Witt's records tonight. <laughs> so, to, tonight I wanted to read out of the um, book of Mark, and it's going to be chapter 4, in verses 35. I'll just start with <laughs> And before I get there, I want to say just a quick prayer. My Father, Lord, thank you again for the opportunity to be here tonight and to speak, Lord. Father, I pray this night, Lord, that whatever I do, God, that through you, Lord, that I can glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. And I know, Lord, you'll bless us for it, and we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And the same day, when even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was, in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm, a wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? When I heard, when I read these verses, I can't help but think about salvation and, and our life here on earth and how Jesus all the way through the Bible is, is beckoning us to trust in him and, and get in the boat with him and he will take us to the other side of eternity. Jesus had no question whether he was going to get to the other side. He knew he was going to get to the other side. When Jesus said, let's go to the other side, he knew he was going to get there and that's Probably why he was asleep in the boat. But I know for some, someone, some people, have never trusted in Jesus by faith and might find it hard to, to leave the shore, to get in the boat. It's life-changing. And on this side, you're content with the pleasures of this world. And I'm not referring to you know, it doesn't have to be referring to things that, you know, even an unsaved person knows not right, you know, partying hard and and living riotous life. We all know the deal there. We now know that's not right. I'm referring more to those that have what we would consider normal lives, you know, normal work week, nine to five, off on weekends, has all the spare time booked up in weekend activities and Sunday brunch and just different things, just decent folk and just not wanting to leave the safety of the shore and get on the boat with Jesus to get to the other side these are uh, these are like I said what we consider just normal folks good folks your neighbors and and all of those people Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 30 for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's the thing about God. He, he's not going to force you to leave the shore and get in the boat. To go to the other side with him. He wants you to make that decision on your own. Um, he knows that you always, you always love something more deeply and care about it more if you choose to love it than if you're forced to love it. And God knows that. That's why he gives us a free choice and a free will to choose him and love him. My hope and prayer is if, if anyone here tonight that's never trusted in Jesus as their Savior, that they would tonight just come on and get on the boat with Jesus to the other side. The Bible tells of a great storm of wind while they were traveling to the other side. And I thought how true this is in a Christian's life today. And I know for me, I would rather be on a boat with Jesus in a storm, rocking and rolling up and down the waves than being in calm waters on a boat going nowhere. We all know as Christians there will be storms along the way, some that blindside us and some that's of our own doing. And I, I'm sure a lot of us can say that. <laughs> Jesus is there, have faith, and he will calm the seas. It may not happen as quick as we like, and we, we may even panic and start asking, just like the disciples, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Which, I've been there. I've, I've been needing the Lord bad, begging him, praying, and I see people out on the job just cussing and rapping and raging, and I just kind of got jealous and thought, Lord, here I am begging you, 
and begging you and, and you just, you know, not helping me at all. And, and, and what got me over that real quick when is when I read in the Bible, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So that put me in my place real quick. But along the way to the other side, in the boat with Jesus, just like everyday life, we will come across other little ships with, without Jesus. It's our job to throw them a lifeline to get on our boat, to get on the boat with Jesus. I know how hard this can be because I have relatives, lifelong neighbors that I fail. I, it's, it's hard for me to go to my neighbor's house. and I got some farm buddies that, you know, terrible health and just seems like any day they could just fall away. And, you know, you mentioned that you're going to church and, and it's hard, and I, I, and I, I need God to help me with that. Whether by the grave or by rapture, one day that ship's going to reach the other side, and it will be too late for anybody that's not on it. It's sad thought for those of us that are in the ship with Jesus, and I pray that uh, we can get more bold in spreading his gospel. Um, I need it, and I'm sure, you know, all of us could. But, and it's a sad thought when he gets to the other side because he's going to get us there one day. He's going to get us to the other side. I thank you again for giving me the time to bring you a message. And I heard a preacher one time say that he didn't ever want to close a service or a message without giving an invitation. Maybe there's someone out there that has never trusted Jesus. Maybe you're on the shore in a boat drifting alone. Maybe you're in the middle of the storm, or maybe you're just like me and need more boldness in the gospel to throw those lifelines out. So I'd ask Brother Jeff if he'd play a little something, and if anybody wants to pray tonight or have a need or something they want to take to the Lord that that you might go ahead and do that, Brother Jeff.